Hi, I'm Mickey V and today I'll be giving you 5 tips that anyone can do in order to level up their video quality. Even if it's just that little bit that you need in order to get better quality and look more cinematic. Let's go! When filming, it's always good to know the three most important settings to make your and your filming footage look more cinematic. First of all, when it comes to your camera settings, shoot in 24 frames per second or as close to it as you possibly can. But when shooting at 24 frames per second, the motion blur that is included in your video feels more natural to the eye. Next up is your shutter speed. Shutter speed is how quick your shutter opens and closes of the camera. When your shutter is longer open, you will get a brighter image, but there will be more motion blur visible. If your shutter opens quicker, your image will be darker because less light will have been able to hit your camera sensor, but it will be a lot more crisp because there wasn't time for light to flood into the sensor and cause motion blur in your image or video. In order for your footage to get that little level up quality, shoot in 1 over 50 shutter speed. The last camera setting that will immediately level up your camera footage is your f-stops. Get it as low as you possibly can, but the prime spot that you want to get is 2.8 f-stops for your aperture. It's just going to separate the background nicely so that your subject does not bleed into the background. Now obviously you can shoot at higher f-stops, but then you will need more distance between your subject and your background for that blur to come in. Next up we have camera angles. Four camera angles that will immediately level up your video quality and give it that cinematic look is going to be as follows. One, your establishing shot. The reason why the establishing shot is so important is because it introduces your audience to where you are. It's always the first thing that they will be asking. And even if it is as small as just showcasing where you are filming, in your living room still, it's just going to add so much depth to your video. Two, the medium shot. This is usually going to be where you are talking in your A-roll section. That means your talking head section. An extra tip, shoot from below whenever possible because this will add a little stage to your subject and help the viewer go into student mode where they're essentially looking up or listening to what the subject is saying. This helps just add a little bit of subconscious authority to the words of your subject. Obviously, if they don't know what they're saying or they don't know what they're doing, that's not really going to help at all. But it is something that you can do in order to just get that extra little bit of something to your video. Three, the medium close-up shot. This is just a very, very tight shot of whatever you are filming, whether that's B-roll or A-roll. You're going to be seeing a lot more detail. You'll be utilizing this when you're showcasing the hands of someone or the feet of someone. Maybe they are busy doing something and it will just draw in the focus of your viewer to the activity that is taking place. And four, the close-up shot. The close-up shot is really, really close. It's very tight. You can hardly see anything else except for the thing that is being filmed. Usually add this in your footage when it is really, really important on focusing when it comes to the details of what is being done. Whether you have a DIY channel and you're busy cutting something, drilling a hole into something, painting something, this shot is useful when showcasing the minute details that could make a very big difference between the skill of someone who's been doing something for 10 years versus someone who's just started. For DIY channels, it could also be very useful when there's a small specific thing that you're supposed to be doing when following their tutorial or something that showcases the quality of an item. 
Next up we have stabilizing your footage. So there are three ways that you can stabilize your footage. The first way that you can stabilize your footage is by activating in-camera stabilization or in-lens stabilization if you have it. If you don't have it, do not fret. You can always add a tripod onto your camera. The tripod is going to give you a structure that is sturdy. So you can either use a tripod or something similar Add it on a boom arm, put it on a C-stand if necessary, if you're using it for that particular shot, like an overhead shot. And then lastly, you can also add stabilization to your footage in post-production. There are a variety of programs that can do this, both free and also not free. Stabilizing your footage is just going to get rid of any jaggediness in your footage that could distract your viewer when watching something. Ultimately, if you're going to be putting something into video format, it's important enough for you to share that, whatever you are busy filming, whatever your message is, whatever the story is. So when adding just that little bit of stabilization, it's just going to make the transition of focus from your viewer easier into your story instead of just moving on to whatever else they could do. So now we're moving on to number four, which is using depth to separate your subject from your background. Okay, now first of all, there are three main things when considering your composition of your frame. So that's going to be your foreground, subject and background. In order to level up your quality and make it a little bit more cinematic, try introducing background blur in order to separate your subject, both from the foreground and the background. You can do this by using a very low f-stop, like the 2.8 or even lower. This will obviously make more blur in order to get like a shallower depth of field. You can also encourage this with your lighting by having the, the background have ambient lighting and your subject having the strongest lighting in your scene. When it comes to lighting, you can either go with natural or artificial lighting, whatever works the best for you and your budget. But each one will work slightly different. Obviously, when you have artificial lighting, there's more that you can do in order to work with your lighting, to make it work for you. But if you have natural lighting, you kind of need to work with it. And then also shoot at times when you can utilize it because you won't necessarily always have access to that natural sunlight. In order to level up your footage, you will most likely divide your lights or your light sources into five different types of lights. So the types of lighting can be divided into two main categories, lights lighting your subject and then lights lighting your background. In general, lights lighting your background are, are known as practicals and their purpose is to bring in the mood, the ambience of your scene. Usually on film sets, this is the first types of lighting that is introduced. It can be as easy as adding a lamp or a cute little practical light, like a light bulb or fairy lights, to your background. The other section, the one where your lights will be focusing on your subject, can be categorized in their utility on separating the subject from the background. Your key light lights your subject. It is usually the strongest light in the frame or in your scene. Full lighting can be either a bounce or an actual light and will only be diminishing the contrast between your highlights and your shadows. It will fill in the shadows so that there's less contrast and less drama in your lighting. The hair light shines on your hair as a type of rim effect in order to separate your subject from the background. Whereas your backlight is actually shining on the background, also working for your subject in order to separate them. Okay, so that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked this video or found it helpful in any way, please click that button down below. Um, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And if you have any, what's it called now again? 
prompts, subjects, questions? Add them in the comment section and let us know what you think. Hope this helps, good luck and Mickey out! <laughs>